I'm Rachel Leitman, uh, and I live currently in Northampton. I was in Cummington previously, and I played a show, a solo show at the um, at the Cummington Church, uh, the Village Church on Main Street. And Sean was there, and came up to me after my set and told me that I needed a bassist. No, not exactly. I didn't tell you. I asked you. <laughs> I said, "Do you ever play with a bass player?" And you said, "Do you know one?" And mm. I said, "Well, yes, actually, I, I am me." <laughs> um, and anyway, so. Uh, I sealed the deal with a with a notebook that I brought back for her from uh, Kathmandu, and uh, like two months before the the earthquake, right? Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I was in Kathmandu, got her a notebook because I knew she liked to write. Brought it back, I'm like, hey, uh, remember me? And she's like, oh yeah, let's get together. And we've been playing together for a year and a half or so. I think that's about right. Bye -bye. Yeah. Do you guys write together? Is this the kind of music you can kind of riff off each other? How, how do you? Um, I, I write the I write the songs. I write the songs, but I don't write the bass parts, and the bass parts have become really integral to the song. So in that way, we kind of do write together in as much as we write separately. You know, like I, I offer the the structure of the song, and then Sean comes up with amazing parts. Uh, she writes the songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm curious how you both got into music. Has it been a lifelong thing, and uh, had, when did you first come at it? How? Uh, yeah, it's a lifelong thing. I took piano lessons when I was a kid, um, not by choice, <laughs> for a long time, until I was maybe uh, 14 or 15, and then thought it was cooler to play the guitar, and I was like a cool kid, and picked up the guitar, and, um, but I've been writing, I've been writing songs since I was like, you know, pre-verbal, like it's like a function of my person, yeah. Cool. And I, yeah, I've played forever, you know, my parents took me to see I'm a little, a few years older than Rachel, and uh, took me to see the Woodstock movie, and I saw Roger Daltrey with the little fringe thing going on in the microphone, and I thought, that's for me, man. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, been pursuing it from different angles ever since then. Um, you know, now just balancing a day gig and a family, and playing music as much as possible. Do you mm -hmm. consider yourself solo? How do you balance uh, recording or just simply performing solo with collaborating with other musicians? Is that uh, something that's changed your music, or mm. that you've, I'm just curious how you two have grown together and with other folks in this area that you sure. work with? Sure. Yeah. So there's been there's been quite an arc, um, beginning with me. I was playing with a uh, a bluegrass flat picker for the first year that I lived in Cummington, which was actually a really interesting collaboration. Um, but that broke up. We broke up. And then Sean, I went and lived for a while with a person who was going to be, or who was destined to be my form, my, my lead guitar player. Um, we started playing together. Sean saw me play solo, came in, um, and then we advertised for a drummer on Craigslist and found Jay Cole, who used to be in the band The Room, The Room. I think is the maybe you don't know a West a Westfield a Westfield West drummer band. and for a, for a solid period of time we were a band like we were a hardy band yeah um, for maybe seven months or so something like that and then um, you know some bands some drama happened and Jason left and then Jay the drummer the percussionist didn't feel comfortable playing without someone filling that lead spot and so he um, is on hiatus and. The cheeses stand alone, but it's it's pretty. I, I like this very much. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you play with other people at different times around town. You do mm -hmm. solo shows. I mean, we're sure. really just exploring how many different ways Rachel's music can be out in the world. You know. Iterated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk for a minute or so about that song writing, lyric uh, storytelling, and really the lyrics of your songs have sure. different iterations of, of musicians, bands, groups your stuff by yourself, has that uh, affected what you want to sing about and write songs about, Talk thematically or, or emotionally? or? Um, you know, I don't think so, no. I, I spent, I lived in Brooklyn for six years and played a lot solo there. Um, and I think, I think the scene that I was in in Brooklyn informed the way I storytell in songs, um, very confessional, um, very like personal, anecdotal, so that, that was informative, but um, playing with Sean and Jason and Jay is the first time that I've collaborated with other musicians on a on like a semi-permanent basis. 
So, I mean, no, not, not really. I feel supported, you know, I feel like my songs will find a safe home, ultimately, with these musicians who I really respect. Um, but they, I wouldn't say that they've influenced the content of what I, oh, I write about. Yeah. yeah. That stuff is pretty fully formed when it comes out, so. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have a definite way of going about things and things that you want to say and ways that you want to say them, and that's, that's pretty, Thanks. pretty firm. Does it feel that way when you're writing? Uh, not always. Sometimes. I mean, like, uh, there are, are certainly songs that have come out fully formed, but that's the exception and not the rule. The, the rule is getting really lost. And um, Sean actually printed out a, a Venn diagram for me that I have on my wall that's really helpful to me. And on one side is um, absolute narcissism, and then the other side is crippling self-doubt, and the intersection is art. And so that's really <laughs> helpful to me it's when I'm writing. Because <laughs> I, I will for sure visit both of those places when, yeah. I'm, when I'm writing. And the Venn diagram is like a nice, is it like a nice zoom out, like, oh, this is like what's happening right now. I'm just having some like fluctuations. And it can be really rocky, you know? It's a lot of like self-confrontation for me, so. It can be rocky to avoid that too. We're all more than one thing. Word, I would, yeah. I would rather. Yeah do the, the rocky thing than the subterranean rocky thing that comes out in weird ways that I don't understand, yeah, which I'm sure is still happening. But. Music gets created that way too, for better or worse. Mm -hmm. Depends though. Sure. So uh, I don't I want to let you guys jump in, but I, you mentioned Roger Daltrey. We were talking a little bit about each other. I would yeah. love to hear just what your some of your musical uh, influences are. Uh, or people you look up to, folks you have on heavy rotation just recently. I'd just like to ex expand the picture a little bit with some other bands or, or, or things you... you take like. notes, you take it away. Uh, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> uh, I've got extremely eclectic taste. I mean, musically, I have a pretty strong sweet tooth. Uh, so, like, uh, things that I've loved in the past couple years, the new pornographer's record from about a year ago, was on endless play in my home for about a year. Um, I like a well-crafted song put together very tastefully with a lot of thought put into making it sound sparkly and nice. Um, so yeah, them, I mean, usual people for be, uh, people my age, you know, Beatles and, and uh, The Who. And, uh, I spent a lot of time playing rock and roll before kind of quieting down a little bit and playing Switching to bass, uh, I play mostly guitar before, but switching to bass and pl uh, qu playing quieter music, which is great fun as well. So, yeah, I'm all over the place. Awesome. What about you, Rich? Um, also, pr probably less all over the place than Sean. Um, but um, the Weepies were just in town, and the Weepies were... Uh, like the soundtrack to my life my sophomore year of college, so I've been revisiting the Weepies a little bit recently. But I've also been re revisiting, I have a six CD changer in my car, and I think right now it's, it's the Weepies, Tom Waits, Tribe Called Quest, Leonard Cohen, and um, this guy, Martine Prechtel, giving a speech called Grief and Praise. It's, it's, I like driving. Right now, those are like the things <laughs> you should like strap to the front of a shuttle or like a like a Voyager uh, mission. You know, like, yeah, that's, like that's maybe like that's Earth's, what I would take to space. That's like Earth's quintessential music, you know, <laughs> and, and pretty eclectic down. actually. Now, now that you prefaced by saying it's not eclectic, I mean that's a pretty eclectic. You know. Yeah, well, I feel like I've done like it's all from other people. You know, it's not it's not. I didn't come across these things just like sitting in my room googling stuff. You right. know, it's like things people have given to me that have resonated and yeah cool cool thanks for chatting a little bit sure. you guys ready to play some songs yeah thanks for asking questions oh my god that's my job that was nice <laughs> <laughs> you did great um so if you want to do a straight set through with an uh, with introduction without at the top and whatever is just fine you know we're going to be splicing and dicing a little bit anyway so uh you know, okay if you want to restart or tell a story anything in the middle that's just fine no pressure if you just want to play